Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and I've been a little bit busy this week, so we're only going to go over a couple of new things, but mostly we're going to go over some common pitfalls that you might have run into when playing around with last week's tutorial. This file will also be available for download, so that now uh, you guys can play around with this one if you want to. Because I didn't include it in the last one! Alright, so let's get started. The first thing you might have noticed, if you played around with any different sorts of shapes, that you might get some gaps like that. And as you can see, it still moves the same way. And you might think that it's not linked properly anymore, but what's actually happening is that there's extra pieces in between here. So what we're going to do is double click this layer and then go right arrow to get to the end of the line and then just start deleting. Now, if you go too far, you're going to have to add more pieces back in. You can see we made a new gap. So add one back in, hit enter, and now it's seamless again. I'm going to undo that so you guys can play around with it in the file. All right, so here's another type of gap scenario. I have this set with a really narrow range and I can't get the range any narrower to actually like make these one dot at a time. So what we're gonna do is double click on the layer and add pieces to fill this gap in. We're gonna add more periods and as you can see, it switches to one and it's basically whether it's an odd or even number. So if I do it again, it goes back to two, back to one, back to two, back to one. So I wanna leave it there, but I still have this gap. So what you're gonna do is double click the layer again to select everything. And then we're gonna go over here, and we're gonna change the tracking. What I like to do is actually click in the box and then hit the up and down arrow to change it just by a little bit. All right, and then you can get it really close. It might not be perfect, as you can see the gap is a little bit different in here, but unless you're really paying attention, you're not gonna see that. I'm gonna undo that one so you can play around with it too, and then we'll go to the next one. All right, so this one demonstrates that you can actually have uh, animators connected to different control layers. So at first this one seems kind of boring, but I've actually linked these animators to different control layers. So you can actually change this around. And now you can see they're different. Now you'll get some weird blinky stuff if they go together because basically the selector is the same and they'll add together. But if you keep them spaced, that won't really happen. Obviously at the end, they all come back together. That looks like this. So you can play around with that one a little bit and let's go to the next one. So if you played around with that last one, you might want to make one of them go in the other direction. And how do you do that? Well, you can't exactly start and go negative because if you add a negative, negative offset, some odd things will happen. But what you can do is make this like a thousand and make this one go to like 800 and then play that. But again, if they cross each other, they'll bump out. So you just got to be careful to make sure that they don't. Of course, if you're just keyframing this, you can just change the offset slightly so that that doesn't happen. So that's that one, let's undo again. All right, save that, and next one. So this one's gonna show kind of two interesting things. First, you can actually have this like crazy looking, like genetic kind of cell looking thing by making your offset really slow. But it also shows that you can actually make this kind of cool with an expression so that you can just change the speed of this. So this key is set to zero and this key is set to one. So over this distance, whatever you have frame-wise, it's gonna move down one of these pieces because each one of these pieces is one away from the other. So if you put a simple loop out continue on that, you can change these from zero to one and change the actual rate. You can actually make this even slower or you can make this way faster just by moving that key. And that's that one. All right, next. So you can use something like a sine expression to make this thing rotate one direction and then slow down and rotate the other direction. Just make sure that whatever you multiply your sine by, you add that to the offset like this, math that sine time times 100, and then I'm adding 100 back because the sine can go to negative one so that you'll end up at negative 100 and you don't want that to happen. So this keeps it from going below zero. You can also do absolute value, but that is a little bit different. And so this is what it looks like. It can be interesting. The positions on these things are also signed, by the way. All right, so the next one. I didn't really mention it before, except maybe in passing, but you can actually use any sort of mask to get a different shape. So in this case, we're just using a triangle, which is kind of neat. But as you can see, if you go to your path options, if you just draw a new thing on here, you can go here and change this. So I can go back to the circle that I had. I'm gonna go back to the triangle, because it's cool. And then the last one, as always, fun. So I've taken the original one that we had at the beginning of this thing and added the sign expression to it and you can see how it changes it. So that's it for this one guys. Unless I find something like super cool to do with this thing, which I'll probably just post on the blog anyway, we're going to be doing something other than text expressions next week. So make sure you guys follow us on workbench.tv.
I am Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.